Hello, welcome to my Succession Valkyrie Guide. I'll be going over the points listed here, and let's jump right into it. Here are the skills I lock. We lock Charging Slash, Severing Light, Flurry of Kicks, Shield Strike, Evasion, Valve Trust, and Rage Transfer. On my hotbar, I use Flurry of Kicks, Just Counter, I just added this here actually. I used to have Judgment of Light here before we had the Shift C cancel for Judgment of Light. Elion's Blessing, Glory of Inslar, Rage Transfer, and Shining Dash. Also for the hotbar, whenever I'm doing PvE, I swap out this Rage Transfer for Shining Judgment of Light. If you want to run with your weapons out without wasting your Shield Chase dashes, Keybind WW Evasion and then use that to run with their weapons out. For this one you have to have absolute just counter skilled. If you need to run a long distance or if you just want to mess around, uh, you can do the helicopter is what I call it. So with that WW evasion that we just found, you hold that down and you run and you click space LMD, space LMD. This is an infinite stamina combo, <laughs> if you will. Let's talk about the Rebombs. These are the ones that I take. I take Celestial Cry, also known as Rebomb Heal. It's another super armor heal that gives you movement speed as well as an accuracy rate buff of 12% for 60 seconds. So it could be used as a pre-buff, but also the heal is pretty much instant compared to Shift E, which has a wind up. So typically what I'll do is I'll Rebomb Heal, Dash Out, Shift E. It'll save you quite a bit. I also use Divine Slam. You used to have Down Smash on all five hits, and they changed it to be the first hit only, which is 30%, I believe. But now it's mainly used for the accuracy buff. Notice that all accuracy rate plus 6% for 10 seconds is what it says. Divine Slam can be canceled out of in a lot of different ways. I'll show that later. I also use Shining Judgment of Light. This one is a hot bar skill. I purely use it for PvE. Just pulling mobs. It's a big AoE in it. And it says, pull in the target on attack 1 hits. PvE only. Celestial Smite is basically another Celestial Spear. It gives you critical hit rate 80% for 5 seconds. Divine Descent. This one gives you 5% special attack damage for 10 seconds. It's a super armor. It hasn't been on cooldown though. I, I could see using this on Awakening. Because you have the normal Heaven's Echo, where you get 60 second, 15% accuracy rate. But in Succession, you don't have that. You either pre-buff with Celestial Cry, which I don't want to do because I want to save it for the heal. Or you can use Divine Slam cancel for the 6% accuracy rate. Divine Slam accuracy buff cancel. The purpose of this is to use Divine Slam solely for the accuracy buff, not the damage or the down smash chance. We have Divine Slam verification. Notice I have an accuracy buff for 6% for 10 seconds. Divine Slam Inslar. Divine Slam Sidestep. Divine Slam Flying Kick. Divine Judgment of Light is the other hotbar of a bomb. It has a down smash chance on it, so it could have some niche applications in PvP if you wanted to style on people, I guess, but I don't use it. Okay, I'm going to do a skill breakdown. I'm going to go over all of the important skills and just tell you what they do. So let's just go down the list here. Glaring Slash is a super armor ability that you mainly use to cancel into Sword of Judgment. It's one of the faster cancels. It can also be used to cancel into Divine Power. Glaring Slash has a chance to down smash. It has decently high accuracy rate at 12% and also 50% critical hit rate. Next we have Sword of Judgment. It's unprotected. It has a pretty low accuracy rate of 5%, and notice 0% crit on this skill, so you have to crit buff before you use it. Sword of Judgment in PvP has a bound. SOJ cancels. So there are quite a few of these. First I'll go over the three most used ones, and then I'll mention the rest. They all happen at different speeds. Well, I'd say three levels of speeds. So we have slow, fast, and very fast. Sharp light, SOJ. That's very fast. Glaring, SOJ, that's fast. Spear, SOJ, that's slow. 
And then the rest, we have Shining Dash, SOJ, Purification, SOJ. This skill I normally lock, but if we have Absolute Severing Light, this is a very fast way to do SOJ. Righteous Charge, SOJ. Counter, Space, SOJ. Sharp Light is used as mainly a second CC, and it's a knockdown. It's also a cancel into Sword of Judgment. The ultimate for Sharp Light, it increases the attack area, so it makes it go farther. Length that extends doesn't actually have the KD. So if you want to get used to the distance that the KD goes, you should unskill it. Divine Power, with the reboot, they gave the skill Super Armor. It also has an attack speed slow of 20% built in. It has decently high accuracy rate at 15%, 100% critical hit rate in PvE. But notice it has 0% critical hit rate in PvP, so you have to crit buff for the skill if you want to deal damage. You also have Ultimate Divine Power. They lowered the cooldown on this one quite a bit with the reboot. It's only 16 seconds now. This will extend the normal Divine Power to have 6 more hits of damage. With the reboot, I believe they took away some hits on this skill and added more damage to the percent number. That effectively made the skill pour its damage out faster. Our first cancel will be Shield Chase. Prime counter has to be Prime into Divine Power. Very similar way, we still use counter, but we cancel the counter with a sidestep instead of a chase. So sidestep counter, Divine Power. Glaring, Divine Power. Ultimate Prime Divine Power will cause you to be animation locked. In this next clip, I'm trying to sidestep the whole time. And that's the strength of Absolute. There's no animation lock. You have Heaven's Echo. So this was nerfed. It used to be a 15% accuracy rate buff for 60 seconds. But notice on the left box here, it says Succession Absolute Heaven's Echo. So this is so this is special to Succession. In Succession, you get 30 DP for 60 seconds instead of 25 DP. And the 15% accuracy rate buff only lasts 10 seconds. That's a huge difference. And it actually makes the accuracy rate buff from the skill not very useful. It's really hard to cast this during a combo because it's unprotected and the animation is quite long. But there are some other options that we have for accuracy rate buffs. Heaven's Echo, Sidestep, Cancel. So we cast Heaven's Echo, and then we cancel with the Sidestep, because the animation is unprotected. So I get the buff, then I Sidestep. Note that you can do this too fast, and you won't get the buff, so you have to time it. Next we have Celestial Spear. You used to take the Absolute Celestial Spear if you wanted to do Spear, Shield Throw, Cancel. But now Prime Celestial Spear works with Shield Throw. This is a really important skill in the kit because it's your critical hit rate buff. You get 80% critical hit rate for five seconds and it's on a seven second cooldown. So that's two second downtime. Celestial Spear in PVP has a bound. Ultimate Celestial Spear adds a second spear that's cast immediately after the first one. Celestial Spear also has a 30% movement speed slow. One of the benefits of Prime Celestial Spear is that you can actually cover the gap by doing a quick Prime Glaring Slash right after. So you just do Spear into Glaring. Okay, so I think this is technically a cancel for Celestial Spear. You do Rebomb Heal. You can also do Heaven's Echo. Judgment of Light is a super armor skill with pretty good accuracy rate at 15%. But notice this is another one of those abilities with 0% critical hit rate in PvP. So you have to crit buff before you use this. But it's 100% critical hit rate in PvE. Judgment of Light is one of our T3 add-on abilities. Judgment of Light in PvP is a stun on the first hit. So before reboot, Judgment of Light would actually stun on every hit. But now it's only the first hit. Judgment of Light also has a down smash, air smash built into it now. That's new with the reboot. Whenever you counter into JOL, sometimes it'll proc and it'll push the enemy away from you. Judgment of Light cast cancels. So this is to do the initial cast. So first, with the rework, they added a new way to cast Judgment of Light. That's using Shift-C. That's exclusively the way I cast Judgment of Light now. I no longer use counter, hold L and B to cast Judgment of Light. First one, this one's a bit slower. Insar and the Judgment of Light. Notice how it's a circle around me. You can't control the direction of that. 
and it's a little bit slower than the other casts I'm going to show you. So if you're doing Inslar, just note that our cancel here is Shield Chase into Shift C. But I'll show you with Inslar, just for the sake of showing you why it's better. So Inslar, dash, JOL. I have control over where it goes, and it comes out a little bit faster. So that's the dash JOL. Next we have sidestep iframe JOL. And lastly, we have shining dash JOL. Shining dash JOL. Next for judgment of light, I would like to go over mid cast cancels. So if we read judgment of light, notice it says attack damage 1497 times seven. Last attack damage, 1497 times 5. So the times 7 is the first wave of hits, times 5 is the second wave of hits. We can actually cancel in between those two hits. So our first one is Celestial Spear. Like that. A roll. Shield Chase. Inslar. Righteous Charge, this is one of your movement skills, but if you have it skilled to ultimate, you actually get an animation that's unprotected. Notice there was a stab animation, but if I unskill the ultimate, you just have Righteous Charge 3. No stab animation, just instant grab. So that's a way that you can go for a quick grab on people. It's unprotected though, so it's quite dangerous if they throw out any sort of CC as you're approaching them. The Absolute has a 6 second cooldown, but 3 has a 7 second cooldown. Next we have our other T3 add-on ability, Shining Dash. This is a high damage dealing, it has multiple hits of knockdown on it, it has super armor, it has forward guard, it has movement. This skill has everything you could ever want. 100% critical hit rate, 15% accuracy rate, amazing. This is, can be used as movement, it can be used as damage, it can be used as a CC, protection. With the reboot, they added a new cancel for this. You can actually do a sidestep roll into Shining Dash, just like that. Another way to cast it is just Shield Chase into a space bar. Okay, so Shining Dash, mid-cast cancels. So that's cancels for Shining Dash during the slashes. So there's three slashes. And you can cancel after the first or second one. So, depending on what you do. So, first one is sidestep. Next is Ensor. Next is Puri. Next up is Celestial Spear. Okay, one more thing about Shining Dash is you can force the slashes if during the dash you press LMB. Doing so will bring you directly into the second slash animation. So then after the second slash animation, you can directly go into any of the cancels I just showed you. Notice I'm only going to do two slashes, which is the second and third. One, two. And this is what it looks like if we force the slashes and cancel out of our first slash. So now we have our e-buff. Our e-buff gives us DP. It gives us cast speed and resistance. Also, it gives you increased HP and SP auto recovery. Next, we have purification. Purification is your DP debuff. Purification has air attack, so typically people use it directly after a grab. Depending on your distance from your target, purification will either heal 20% or 40% HP. Here's a couple of examples, 40%. Next one's going to be a 20% heal, and then the furthest away you could be for 40%. Okay, Inslar. So Inslar has a marking attack at the beginning of it, and then you land on the target. So you can actually jump up walls and stuff with this skill. It also aggroes mobs when you land. Inslar is an AP buff. It has 100% critical hit rate built into it. They added iframe at the beginning of Inslar for succession, just like it is on Awakening. So now we can actually use this to dodge grabs. Next we have our heal, shift E heal. This heal is the longer wind up in our kit. It'll heal 30% of our max HP. It'll also heal our mana. It'll give us movement speed. But since we're succession, we don't get the awesome 
three second super armor applied to us and allies awakening does oh, it's like the highlight flurry of kicks this is uses the hotbar skill purely utility so you can pull your weapons out very quickly we can run with our weapons put away and go into an instant shield chase the way we do that is we're going to be holding down w and shift and then we're going to press the hockey instant shield chase you can even do it sideways if you just press the a or d button as well as backwards absolute flying kick this is a knockback. I never really used the knockback CC on it. Flying kick can be used for several different cancels. The first cancel is shield throw. With this one, you have to be targeting something in order for it to work with the red reticule. Next is glaring in certain situations. So spear, shield throw. This is what it looks like without the flying kick. And this is spear, shield throw, flying kick, glaring. Our grab is one of the shorter ranged grabs, I would say. It's a pretty standard grab, just click E. When they hit the ground, it'll apply an AOE bound. It's a float, so you can actually get your air attacks from purification when you do your grab. You have super armor when you land the grapple. If you don't land the grapple and you miss, I recommend using Inslar. It will help you avoid getting CC'd by giving you an iframe into an essay. Prime counter, before reboot, we used to use this to cancel into Judgment of Light. Counter has a float CC attached to it. High accuracy rate of 50%. Uh, it's not mainly used for its damage, but I would say it's mainly used for animation cancels and the float. Notice that counter says it has an air smash and a down smash. Those two don't happen on the first hit of counter. They actually happen on the spin attack. Down LMB, spacebar. The classic shield throw. So shield throw is a forward guard. It has decently high damage, 50% critical hit rate built in, 10% accuracy rate, and it's a stun in PvP. The same with shield throw as Judgment of Light. With the stun, it used to be every hit of shield throw, now it's only the first hit. So with the way they changed the stuns on shield throw, the way it works now is the normal ability still has 5 hits of stun, but the flow, see how it says stun on the flow? It used to be all 6 hits of the flow were a stun, now it's only the first hit of the flow is a stun. That's the way I understand it at least. So the first part of shield throw is actually really fast. If I unskill the flow here, we'll actually be able to see how long that the first 5 hits of stun last. And that's the 5 hits. Okay, shield throw cancels. We have spear shield throw. That could be SE, so Celestial Spear Shield Throw, or it could be the Rabom. But then we have Sidestep Shield Throw. And this last one, I don't recommend, but just so you know what's possible, you can unskill Prime Counter for Absolute, and then you do Counter Shield Throw. Next we have Just Counter. One of my favorite abilities in the kit, I think it's super underrated. Just counter has three hits of stiff, pretty high critical hit rate of 50%, very high accuracy rate of 30%. You also recover your mana using this ability. One of the cool things about the prime is it has a 30% movement speed slow. It also propels you forward. Just counter can be used on the hotbar with your weapons away to quickly pull out your weapons and do a quick stiff. You can also use it from the hotbar when you're not in guard stance to immediately do just counter. So here I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like with the hotbar versus doing Q block into forward LMB. From hotbar, when cast directly after divine power, just counter takes about 25 frames to actually get the stiff, in this example at least. With guard stance in this instance, it came out to be about 41 frames. In this next section, I did some testing with the amount of frames it takes until you stiff the target using absolute versus prime just counter. I don't know if this is scientifically correct way to do it. My project is at 60 frames per second, and then I just put a time code counter for the frames. So here's absolute, came out to six frames. I did a second frame test for each of these, and the values came out to be about the same. I just wanted to make sure I was standing the same distance away.
and Prime came out the 15 frames. For Prime Just Counter, the pros are you have a movement speed slow, it has slightly more damage. It could be a pro, it could be a con, it moves you forward quite a bit. So if you're doing a forward guard, it could be bad because if you're going forward at a person, that person can get behind you and hit you in the back. You're slower to hit the target, the stiff comes out slower. The animation duration for the second hit is quite long, so you can be animation locked and get CC'd out of it pretty easily. But you can just avoid doing the second hit altogether, so that might not be an issue. For absolute just counter, it's faster to hit the target. So our shield chases, so we have four shield chases, they have reduced cooldowns compared to the pre-awakened versions. We also, with Succession, we have an AP buff associated with Shield Chase. So when you do one Shield Chase, you get 4 AP. When you do two consecutive Shield Chases, you get 10. When you do three in a row, you get 16. But I wouldn't focus too much on the AP buff because you need to conserve your dashes to use them to reposition. We can mouse move Shining Dash, both the movement and the hits. Other skills we can mouse move include Righteous Charge and Shield Chase, as well as Shield Throw and Judgment of Light. So I used to do the Shield Throw and Judgment of Light one a lot because they had multi-hit CCs, but not anymore. So it's less useful. That's Shield Throw. Here's JOL. Shield Chase. Righteous Charge. These are the add-ons I typically use, but I'm going to go ahead and show another set, uh, and you can decide which one you prefer. I mainly focus on large-scale PvP, so that's why I have this set. You might be wondering why I don't run 20% critical hit rate on Celestial Spear. Typically people will do that. Celestial Spear has 80% critical hit rate buff for 5 seconds. And then you add the 20, makes it 100. So what I thought was 5 out of 5 critical hit rate, the stat on your P menu, I thought that gave you 20% critical hit rate. But it turns out it only gives you 18% critical hit rate. So I'm actually missing 2% critical hit rate. Uh, just keep that in mind with the add-ons I have set up here. I'm constantly changing these add-ons. I used to run the bleed on glaring actually, not shield throw. Uh, I also ran, I think it was down attack damage. You might want to consider, I also ran critical hit damage on Celestial Spear as well. Here's the other set. First we have Divine Power. I do slow stacking on Divine Power. There's 20% attack speed slow built into the skill already. And it's a big AoE, so it's going to hit a lot of people. As well as being protected with super armor. On Purification, I run minus DP and minus evasion. This stacks on top of the all DP minus 20 for 10 seconds, that's built into the skill. On Celestial Spear, we have human damage and accuracy rate. Celestial Spear will be used before skills like Sword of Judgment and Judgment of Light, which have 0% crit built into the skill. But Celestial Spear gives us an 80% crit buff for 5 seconds. And Sword of Judgment actually has a pretty low accuracy rate, so having that extra 4% is nice, as well as more damage. On Judgment of Light, I use crit hit rate 30% and crit hit damage 5%. So typically when I'm casting Judgment of Light, I will use a spear beforehand to give it 100% crit rate. But since I run Rabomb Heal, there's actually two second downtime in between having my spear crit buff and not having it. Having the 30% crit rate allows me to have 50% crit rate on Judgment of Light at all times, no matter what, even if I don't use a spear, because if we look at our P menu, we have critical hit rate. Each one of these levels is 4% crit hit rate, so at max it's 20. So 20 plus 30, 50. And I'll have 5 crit with a giant drought. Next I'm going to explain a little bit about why I run the 30% critical hit rate on Judgment of Light. For what I'm about to do, pay attention to my buff bar up here. Look out for the 5 second critical hit rate icon from Celestial Spear. And notice when it runs out. So what I'll do in large scale typically is Spear 
Insular, Judgment of Light, Glaring, and Divine Power. If you noticed, right at the end of Glaring, the 5 second 80% critical hit rate from Celestial Spear ran out. But I still had the 30% critical hit rate from my add-on here. So that was giving Divine Power, which is a 0% critical hit rate skill, 50% critical hit rate because 30% plus our stats over here. If it was five out of five, it would be 20%, making it 50%. On shield throw, I run attack cast speed and bleed damage. Shield throw is typically used as an engage or a catch. So you'll have that attack speed for the rest of your abilities. And it's a decent AOE to apply the bleed on multiple targets. On Insar, I run attack cast speed and all DP minus 15. I run the attack cast speed because I use Insar's in engage a lot of the time in large scale. And also the debuff will apply whenever I engage. So typically you'll see me do something like Spear, Insar, JOL. So I'll have the attack cast speed for casting JOL and they will be debuffed. Okay, so that's how I run my add-ons. I encourage you to figure out what works best for you. I think there's a lot of viable options when it comes to add-ons, so make your own decisions. For Succession Valkyrie skill point builds, I've put four different builds down below in the description. These builds can all be found on the Valkyrie Discord. But whenever you're leveling up your skill points, I'd suggest that you use Awakening. Personally, that's what I would do. It's just a lot easier to move around on and kill the lower end mobs quickly. Here's an example of a PvE skill rotation. First, we pull the mobs with either Heaven's Echo or Shining Judgment of Light. And once they're grouped, we can debuff with Purification and AP buff ourselves with Enslar. Next, you can Shield Chase to position yourself behind the mobs. Shield Chase doesn't have collision whenever you go backwards or sideways. Next, you crit buff with Celestial Spear into Shield Throw. Then you can Shield Chase again behind the mobs to Sharp Light, SOJ, Flaring, SOJ. And that crit buff from the Celestial Spear will last for those two SOJs. For filler, we can use two of the longer cooldown skills, Judgment of Light and Ultimate Divine Power. Both have 100% critical hit rate in PvE. Here's an alternative. You could utilize the Flying Kit Glaring Cancel that I showed earlier. Spear, Shield Throw, Flying Kit Glaring. I'd just like to point out that each hit of Shining Dash actually is a knockdown, but here we do two slashes of Shining Dash, so why did you not get knocked down twice? It's because if you do the same CC within one second of each other, the second CC won't go through. It's part of the CC rules. For this combo, and the one before, you could actually force the slashes of Shining Dash manually with LMB. That would force you to be in the second attack initially, and then the third attack. So you deal more damage here. Here's an example of a case where I force the slashes and I get a kill because of it. Otherwise I wouldn't have CC'd this person, since the third slash has the biggest AoE.
In this combo, I run out of my 80% critical hit rate buff from Celestial Spear around the second SOJ. So I just want to reiterate the importance of having the 30% critical rate add-on on JOL here. It will give us 48% critical hit rate if we were to have 5 out of 5 crit on our P menu. This last one's for Celestial Smite users. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can check me out at Twitch, twitch.tv slash LarryFish. I typically stream Node Wars, both T1 and T2. Also Siege, RBF, rarely grinding. But yeah, come hang out. Later, guys.